If you can hear me in the back, wave your hands. Awesome. Welcome to our first men's fraternity of 2024. My name, yes. Thank you for uh, braving the cold and misty weather and being here on time. For those of you who weren't here on time and it was 6.02 and you were standing there to get your coffee and food and everyone else was doing highs and lows, you'll know what not to do in February. So there you go. So my name is Chris Sherry and I'll be doing the three questions today. And let's start off with a big CPC men's ministry welcome for Eric Ryan. Morning, Eric. Morning. Eric, you're a local guy. You grew up here in Danville, CPC. Tell us, what do you do for work and your hobbies? So, good morning. Um, I'm 29 years old, so I work in uh, commercial real estate and retail. So, I've been blessed to work for a company, Regency Centers, for the last five years. Um, very fortunate that my boss has been a big mentor for me, not only career-wise, but um, he... Um, Religious-wise, he's been fantastic and supportive of my journey this entire time. And um, is it Gary Fields? I don't know. You guys might know him, um, local. Um, great guy, but uh, I've been in the industry for five years. Um, big skier. Um, so pretty much every weekend, I'm either skiing or um, out golfing on the golf course. So you can find me doing one or the other. Every weekend, skiing or playing golf? What do you think? Married or single? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, tell us, tell us about your faith story. So I've been, I've been coming to CPC since I was in elementary school. So I, I would say I'm a boomerang. So I started about third, fourth grade, um, went through middle school. I took a break in high school and college. And the last uh, two years I've come back around and it has been the best decision of my life. Um, transformative would be an understatement. It's been fantastic. Uh, realigning my goals, my priorities, and uh, it's been an incredible journey. Now, you've been coming to Men's Fraternity for a couple of years. I know you were at the retreat last year. Last question, what does coming to be with a group of guys, what's that mean for you personally and professionally? Um, well, it's been everything. You know, I've been trying to find... Um, really good mentors in my life, and I've been blessed to have a men's group uh, who's cut in half today due to sickness, but uh, um, Jim Cowan and uh, Jeff, they've been incredible figures in my life. My dad, who's in a uh, men's group as well, um, it, it's just been incredible finding um, people who are further along on their, their religious journey and who have been uh, pillars in my life and just incredible people to be around. All right, and a bonus fourth question. Are you coming to the men's retreat February 23rd? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Eric Ryan, everybody. All right. A little bit on retreat real quick. You want me to do it? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll back you up. Buddy. Okay, back me up. <laughs> men's retreat, you all have the date. It's February 23rd through 25th. Now, when you're pitching this to your significant other or whatever, it's not a three-day conference okay that that's that's not selling it right it's 48 hours about it's quick friday night all day saturday you're home sunday afternoon to watch the late football games you're there to do work so it's gonna be awesome it's not gonna snow this year we're gonna get there on time but the retreat it's a awesome opportunity to leave the bubble go over to mount herman to the santa cruz mountains and there's just something special about being up there on the mountain and the redwood trees and it's misty bunch of guys we're gonna we're gonna worship we're gonna eat we're gonna pray we're gonna get in small groups and go deep and then the conversations will go late in the night and uh, magic's gonna happen and there's also opportunity Saturday to go mountain biking hiking bowling uh, if you're rich you can go golf at Pebble Beach whatever you want make it a priority signups are going live like as soon as we're done here Kevin's gonna press play and then you can sign up we want to make sure we fill the place. We're going to be in the big auditorium. We'll have the worship band. Renee Schlepper's coming. He, he was the speaker at the retreat about four years ago. He's dynamite. It's a really good time. For those of you who haven't been to the men's conference, I'm telling you, once you go, you'll say, that had a lot of value. I want to do that again. 
and you're going to make friends, and then you'll come back here and get in groups. It'll be awesome. I thought that was pretty good. What do you guys, you don't you want to go now? Come on. Captain. Hey, you notice Captain's growing his beard out. He's trying to look more like me. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, you guys should come. Come to the men's conference, men's retreat. Who? I don't know what we call it. We just, I, I just kind of switch up the name every once in a while. Men's retreat to men's conference. It's gonna be, it's gonna be legit. I'm really looking forward to it. Just a good time to connect with the guys. I feel like, uh, well, you know when you go away for something like that, it's like you get time spent with someone that adds up to feels like a year with somebody. You know what I mean? It's not like this kind of once a week meeting, it's hard to build really close relationships quickly. And then when you go on a trip like that, uh, 48 hours feels like a whole year. I mean, not literally, but you know what I mean. And you, you get a lot of time spent with guys. So that's, that's super, that, that, that could be the selling point for you is to just build good relationships with dudes. Um, real quick, we have a birthday over here with the Orwig table. 94 years old John right here. Today, just stand up. We're just gonna, look at this guy. Today, 94. He loves it. He's like, he didn't even hear. He's like, I don't know, I'm just here. Jeff just drags me here. <laughs> um, and then one more thing real quick. Uh, uh, Mark has a, 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 a guy at his table, Gary. Gary's daughter is the, you can come up here, is the director of Night to Shine. So you guys know what Night to Shine is? Yeah, you guys are familiar? That, we're actually hosting Night to Shine here February 9th. He's gonna share something just super quickly. Um, Mark asked me about this last night and I was like, yeah, we can, we can talk to the guys about it. So here you go. Thank you, sir. Of course. Good morning, CPC men. Whoa, there are some people that are sick. <laughs> um, just wanted to share with you uh, about Night to Shine uh, coming up this uh, February 9th. Um, CPC has allowed us to come here with the Night to Shine. We've had it up in Walnut Creek previously. Uh, my daughter got involved with this uh, about eight years ago. We went to a Christian convention where she saw Tim Tebow speak with regards to his, his foundation. And she got involved the next uh, two years later in Livermore. And then she said, I'm going to do this in Contra Costa County. And so she started it five years ago and has been doing it since. The signups this year are, are just going nuts. It's over 200 young people or, or special needs persons that are coming. And there's about 400 volunteers already. And then they, we also have a dinner for the caregivers or families. So this whole place is going to be taken over by Night to Shine. And uh, at this juncture, if you need some information, I have it here. I'll be in the back. Uh, she sure can use some funds right now. Never anticipated it growing from 120 to over 200 uh, in a year. So uh, just a dynamic thing that's taking place, and God's just blessed this whole program. So appreciate it so much. See you there. If you have time to be there, you should come and just stop by. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, if you guys, um, we're like, this church is so generous. And so like, obviously we're really sensitive to what we like ask for naturally. Um, and we just want you to know like, hey, this, this event is something that we value at our church. We love the people of this community. Um, and it's like, I personally, like my, my, my wife's uncle had Down syndrome and would do events like this. And it was like kind of one of the coolest events that would happen. It was so special for them. It was also ex especially special for her family to see them, to see her uncle Kevin feel so honored and special. So uh, if that's something you feel led to, to contribute to in some way, uh, even if that's just prayer come in, or, or feel like you want to volunteer or whatever, like take, take the next step and, and move forward with that. Um, you guys ready to go for teaching a little bit? Can I just open us up in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this morning. We first, we thank you for John's life, 94 years, God. Um, that's a man of faithfulness to you, a man whose legacy has rung true just through this church and this community at this time. Lord, we uh, ask just now for the, uh, the gift of faith to have the longevity that it takes to follow you for, for however many years John has been following you. Thank you for his life. Thank you for everything that you are doing in and through him to this day. Uh, and Lord, we bless this morning and we give this morning up to you in your name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Um, so if you guys are familiar, we, if you remember, I should say, we're, we're kind of working through the book of Philippians, which is kind of, it's a letter that Paul writes to a church in Philippi. 
uh, and that's kind of on the coast of, of the Roman Empire. And it's one of the first churches he visits. He lands there. He meets this woman named Lydia. They end up planting this church, and he loves this church. Like, he's like, this church is uh, a success story to him, you know? Meaning, and I think the reason why it's a success story is just because they follow Jesus well. They just live in the practice of the way of Jesus, the way that Paul has kind of envisioned it to be. So this letter is... Uh, like an exhortation, meaning like it's an encouragement, but it's also just kind of reminders. Um, and so today we're, we're going to look at the first, the first part of the second chapter of the book of Philippians. This is super interesting. I just, this just came to my head. The chapters and verses, that like came so much later in church history. You know, like originally these letters and these books were supposed to be read like as a scroll. Like you would open this up and someone would just read through the book of Philippians completely. So if you haven't yet, take time. It takes probably 15 minutes of your morning to just kind of read through the whole thing, because then you can get kind of the whole picture of what Paul is talking about, kind of where it, it, you can see his train of thought. Uh, when we do this kind of a out of context thing, you can kind of miss beginning parts and, and, and what's, coming, what's coming ahead. So anyway, I'll read it. It's Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. I'm only going to focus on one section, but I thought reading most of Scripture That way, if I say something wrong, then at least you got scripture this morning. You know what I mean? Uh, Here we go. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. He took on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found as the appearance of a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And at that name, that of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen, right? Um, I was just, I was reading this, and the first thought that I came to my mind was, I am, I am a non-conformer. That is just what I am. Like, I, I, am, I am bred, I think it's my millennialism, I think it's, like, you can call me a hipster, I got, you know, I get jokes about my cuff pants from you guys more than anything else, it's fine. I like to call it punk rock, like, I just grew up kind of playing in bands my whole life, and just, like, I just didn't want, like, I grew up in Danville, and I didn't play any sports. Like, who do you know that does that? You know what I mean? <laughs> I just didn't. I, I, was a skate, I was a skateboarder. I just like went to the skate park and did that kind of thing. Like I just didn't want to conform to anything. And I was just reflecting. And it's like, in a sense, that has like catapulted me in specific ways, but also hurt me because what it ends up doing is like it creates an individualistic mindset in my own life. And that individualistic mindset is actually affects every single one of us, right? Like we live in a culture of individualism. What I mean by individualism, simply, really simply, is the needs of yourself, the, oftentimes the needs of ourself kind of over or outweigh the needs of maybe your community or your family or whatever that looks like. So often what, how it, it takes shape is like, uh, you, you fight to get ahead. You want to stand out. You, you want to be self-made. You want to be different. And that's like a, that's a, how do I say this? That is a culture that has been bred from the West. Like the Western society we live in is an individualistic culture compared to a collectivist culture. So like Asian countries and specifically really, if you're like near Eastern Asian countries or sorry yeah so near eastern asian countries like the middle east and especially in ancient in the ancient middle east it was a collectivist culture a family bond like the way that they viewed uh the community that they lived with it was like no you sacrifice yourself for the need of the community it's not the need of yourself over the community it's the community over yourself so you take you 
the, the understanding would be you actually take losses for the group win. That's the kind of people that Paul is writing to. Now, I don't actually think there's one specific way of living. Like, I don't think individualism in its core is wrong, and I don't think collectivism in its, in its core is right. I think there actually could be a tension that needs to be understood. So, for example, it's like we, we need to look at this sameness. That, like, when, when Paul talks about this, he says, be like-minded, have the same love, be one in spirit and one of mind. Like, that sounds like conforming. You know, that sounds like, oh, we're just all sheep. And we just go like, well, we just do the same thing. And like, there is no uniqueness, right? And I don't think Paul's saying that. I think Paul's saying like, hey, we need to have a, t- there's a tension that needs to be held between the, our, our oneness in mind and our uniqueness in spirit. So what does Paul actually mean when he says to be one in mind, when he says to be one in spirit, when he says to have the same love? I think he means a, a multiple things, but... The first thought is God created every single one of us with specific unique talents, right? Every single one of us, you and me, we all have different unique interests and talents and tastes, and we have different experiences and different strengths and different weaknesses. And to ignore these unique qualities about ourselves would be unwise, right? It would, be, it would belittle the creation that God has given us. And, and, and on the other hand, if we put that individuality above God's plan for the community, that can be damaging in and of itself, right? If I place my own needs above my, my, my family or my church community or whatever, my, my actual biological family, it can often become damaging in the relationship context. So there's a tension to live in. Are you, are you following me? There's this tension. So I was thinking, it's pretty short. Like this teaching is pretty short. I'm gonna give you guys more time than normal. But... I would write these questions down. I didn't put them on your paper. I've, I have five questions. And I think because every single one of us come from a culture of individualism, right? Like fight to make your own name, do that kind of thing. It's good to be reminded of how can we use our individualism to, in the context of the kingdom of God? Like how can we take our individualism and help encourage the body of believers, help build up the community and it kind of have this like hybrid collectivist, individualist kind of state of mind, kind of mentality in, in life. So the first question was, is my individuality building up others and specifically does it build up the body of believers? Does it build up the church? Is my individuality building up the church? Do I use my gifts? Do I use the gifts that God God has given me, my leadership abilities, my servant heart, my generosity, whatever that looks like, to build up the, the the body of the kingdom of God? Next one is, do I put the gospel above my preferences? Like when I say gospel, I think holistically gospel, not just Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Think uh, compassion, grace, kindness, self-control, gentleness. Do I put the gospel above my own preferences. And this, I think you can see this kind of more in like a, uh, uh, <laughs> like a, a literal example is, I also love to play golf. And I'm constantly reminded that my own preference is to go play golf for four hours and not hang out with my wife. So do I put my golf kind of hobby above the, the actual, you know, the, the gospel? And the gospel is to honor my wife, Right? To, to, to honor her the way that Christ submitted to the church, which is to die for her. The next question is, do I care more about how people perceive me or do I care about how people perceive Christ in my life? Like, do people look at me and think, oh, wow, like Caleb is so successful? Or do they look at me and think, wow, Caleb has really conformed to the image of God? And I think I would answer no, I think that I want people to think I'm successful. <laughs> you know, like I, that's what I want. But I think the right state of mind, would, the right mindset would be, I think people see me and hopefully they see like a piece of Jesus when they see me. Next question. Do people feel encouraged after spending time with me? Do people feel encouraged when they spend time with you? 
Or do they feel drained? Do they feel like exhausted? They feel like, oh my gosh, that person always just talks about themselves. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like those humble braggers, they're like, oh, I was a track star. And you're like, okay, you're not a track star anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stop talking about it. <laughs> that was a real example, sorry. Um, how well, next question, how well did I serve the needs of the, how well do I serve the needs of the people around me? When I look at my kids, my family, my, my coworkers, my, the people that are around me, the community that I would call uh, my closest community, how well, do I, how well do I serve their needs? Do I care for them? Do I, sub, like, do I help them? Do I make time for them? Do I drop tasks that I have on my plate and, and go and serve them in some capacity? So if, those are the five questions. So take a look at those questions. Maybe, maybe you can use that as your framework for how you guys are gonna spend time this morning. Um, I think they're great. I think they're great just reminders, just kind of like, just a check in your spirit. Maybe it's something that you just kind of like write down and, and maybe reflect on at the end of the day. Like take a look at those questions and be like, okay, did I, did I do these today? And if I did those today, then I am living in this kind of beautiful tension of a collectivist mindset, meaning like I place the community above my needs, but also an individualistic mindset, which is like, yeah, it is important to to grow and to become, you know, a, a, a self-made individual, but not to abandon the needs of others. You follow me? This tension that we need to live in. Yeah? Okay, let me, let me pray for you guys and then just spend some time in your group. So Lord, we, we thank you for this morning. Um, I was up nice and early, right before the sun, 4.30 a.m. And I was just reminded of the, of the Lord, the first thought I had this morning was, your mercies are new every morning. And so, Lord, we just accept those, those new mercies. As sure as the sun comes up, as confident as we are in the, that the sun comes up, that's how confident we can be in your mercy and your love and your hope and your joy that you give us. So, Lord, thank you for that. Bless the time that these guys have right now in their groups. Um, and thank you just for the legacy of this group, Lord, from generation to generation, from, for, from all ages of people, trying to follow and pursue after you. We love you, and in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, enjoy your group.